I'm happy. <laughs> A very beautiful day to every one of you, my professional nurses. God bless you all. How are we all doing? I know we're excited. This morning, I just got four maids of passes this morning, and I celebrate with all those who pass. Um, in fact, I'm super proud of you, like I always say. So, guys, like I promised, I'm going to be doing a video on self-study with me. So, today, I'll be introducing those writing their SK exam soon to so all ski, and I'll be dropping a timetable. I'm fully in, guys. So, if you know anybody at all who will be writing their OSCE exam next month, please share my video with them let them you know watch my video subscribe as well as share with their older colleagues who are preparing for all ski exam so guys thank you so much for your encouragement a lot of people have really been encouraging me they don't want me to stop they keep do this do this i really appreciate okay guys so please endeavor to like this video endeavor to subscribe endeavor to share if you've not done it and if this is your first time of watching me my name is violet okolacha um, i'm actually a nurse and i talk about everything about all ski exam and nurse in year in the uk all right guys let's get started so for those who be taking their OSCE exam newly welcome to the uk but if you've not come yet and you know you'll be taking your exam whether you're in ghana india zimbabwe so you can just follow us up and i can promise you for sure you're going to write your exam in one sitting so let's get started what is OSCE exam in my own terms OSCE is just assessing your ability to competently apply your skills and knowledge here in the UK. It's a very, very simple word, exam. Now, permit me to categorize this exam into two, part A and part P. Part A is API plus two skills. Yes. What is API? API is assessment. P is planning. I is implementation and E is evaluation plus two skills. I'll be listing the skills soon, so don't worry, which is a total of six stations. Now, if you took the old CBT, you're more likely to get six stations, which is API plus two skills. Now, if you took the new CBT, you are more likely to get API, which is assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation, plus four skills. Now, I always say this to my students, prepare very well. You may likely get 10 stations. Prepare well. I, I, I say it to people. When I'm preparing anybody for exam, I tell you, prepare well. Forget about, I may get C station because I'm an old CBT. The reason I'm telling you this is because somebody sent an email to me and she said to me, I prepared for C stations because that was what I thought I would be having. And I ended up having 10 stations. Yeah, it was this morning I saw that message or yesterday. So prepare well. Prepare very, very well. So whichever you get, whether you're getting 10 stations, you're getting six stations, whichever you get, prepare well. And I can bet you, I am definitely going to congratulate you. So that's all basically. And um, from the 14th of June, 2021, four elements we actually added to us, Kiesa, just four. And one of them is under assessment, and that is fall and fracture it was added into the assessment and don't worry i'm going to tell you all you expect just follow me step by step so fall and fracture was added vip which is vitro infusion phlebitis was added ng tube was added and pressure area assessment using the braden score was added so these are the four that we added from on the 14th of june 2021 and another thing that has been added is blood glucose monitoring so what did i say was added ng ng tube that is ng feeding and um what did i say deep pressure areas assessment using the bryden school was added then fall and fracture which you can get in assessments was what was added so now i'm going to be listing everything you need to know about oski exam i'm going to be starting with assessments in assessments there are four things you may likely get of this four i'm mentioning you're going to get one in your assessments all right, guys. So two is in clinical setting and two is in community setting. Now, in your assessment, you may get most, which is malnutrition, universal scoring two. And if you get that, it's always in the community setting. It is very simple. Don't worry. When I give you your t uh, our timetable, then we're going to be going through it. So it is very simple. Must you get that in the community. Another one you're most likely to get is PHQ9. PHQ, and that's for a patient who is depressed. You get that also in the community setting. All right, guys. And um, GCS, 
which is used to assess the patient's glasgocoma scale, you get that in the hospital setting. News, under news, you are likely to get asthmatic patients, atopic pregnancy, preoperative cases, fall and fracture. Under news, you are likely to get all this. And news is in the hospital setting, just like GCS is in the community setting. You can, and so that's all. Those are the four parameters you can get in assessment, or rather the four elements. Most, PHQ-9, GCS, and what, and news. An assessment is 15 minutes. 15 minutes. But trust me, you're going to finish your assessment before 15 minutes. Now, after assessment is what is planning. Planning is 15 minutes. You, I have a video on everything, but don't worry. I, I'm going to show you how we're going to work it out. Planning is 15 old minutes. Trust me, I'll give you the techniques when we get there. You'll finish planning in less than 15 minutes as well. And the third one is implementation. Implementation is where you administer drugs to your patient. It is a complete 15 minutes but trust me you're going to finish before 15 minutes i'll be sharing the techniques when it's time and it's evaluation is what 15 minutes now before i tell you the skills you are most likely to get it doesn't really follow suit like some people expect that as i'm writing my skills i'm going to be doing a pie face before doing the skills it doesn't follow that way you may start with skills do a pie and end with skills or you may start with a pie and end with skills so it all depends on what on your assessor or it all depends on the word examiner so now i'll be mentioning the skills for you the first skill i'll be mentioning is ng that is ng feeding and this skill when it was newly introduced was eight minutes but now is 12 minutes so ng feeding via the nose and the next one is vip which is vitreal inflation phlebitis. This is eight minutes. I don't know if it has been increased to 12, but it's eight minutes for this scale. And trust me, you finish before what? Eight minutes. The next one I'll be introducing is pressure area assessment using the branding skills. These are skills and you may you may get any of these. So you have to prepare for all. So pressure area assessment, this is eight minutes. You use the branding score to assess the patient pressure areas. This is eight minutes. If it has been increased, I'm not too sure, but this is eight minutes for this key. But don't worry about the time allocated, just practice well. So another one is subcutaneous injection. Yes, subcutaneous injection, intramuscular injection, those are skills. So if you're getting subcutaneous injection, intramuscular injection, you can either get it in an hospital setting or you can get it in the community setting. And another skill you're likely to get is basic life support in hospital resuscitation without defibrillation. And this is eight minutes as well. It's one of the skills you're likely to get. Administration of inhaled medication is one of the skills you're likely to get. It is eight minutes. Fluid balance is one of the skills you are likely to get. Fluid balance is, I think, 15 minutes. Yes, complete 15 minutes. ANTT. ANTT is one of the skills you're likely to get, which is aseptic non-touch techniques, and it's 15 minutes. Peak exploratory, peak exploratory flow rate, which is peak flow meter, is one of the skills you're likely to get, and this key is 12 minutes. Catheter sample of urine is one of the skills you're likely to get, and it is 12 units. Removal of catheter is one of the skills you're likely to get and it is 12 minutes. Urinalysis or midstream urine is one of the skills you're likely to get and it is what? It is 12 minutes. So those are the skills you are likely to get in your ski exam. Guys, all the skills I've mentioned are very, very, very simple skills. It all boils down to you practicing effectively to achieve your aim in the all ski world, in your ski exam. So those are the skills you are expected to get in your OSCE exam plus API. So prepare well. Don't be surprised if you plan for six and probably you may get eight or ten stations. So just prepare well. That's my advice towards to you. So guys, I am going to be dropping the timetable. It's a five days self study with me. Five days self study with me. So this is how it will work. I'm going to be working directly with those who are very serious. If you're not serious, then we can't really work effectively. Those who are very serious, who when I drop a video, 
they do my assignments, they watch my videos, and they comment. Those are the people I'll be working with directly. I'll work with you and make sure you achieve your aim, which is passing your exam in one sitting. So I'll be dropping the timetable here now. So before I drop the timetable, this is how it's going to be working. This is how it's going to be working. So today, um, in the timetable, I wrote today as day one. But they save the study. I'm not counting today. So the one is like I'm presenting the timetable to you. I've introduced OSCE to you, telling you about everything about OSCE. It's just assessing your competence to assess your knowledge and skill to competently practice here in the UK. So uh, this is like a day one. So I'm bringing in the timetable now. So if you have a biro and a paper, write on your timetable day one. Introduction to OSCE, presentation of timetable, which I'm doing now. So for today... I'm giving an assignment. The assignment is, I have a video on assessment. Hmm? Because I'm going to be starting with assessment. So today, I want you from today, because I think tomorrow or next tomorrow, I'll be talking about everything about assessment. So what I expect you to do today is the one, write presentation of timetable, introduction to all ski and hard washing. I'll show you, I'll show you what I expect you to do now. Rule three lines. Rule three lines. The first line should be very short, as in should be shorter because it has the days. And the second line should be wider because it has the topics. And the third line should be wider as well because it's going to tell you what you need to self-study. Okay? So I'll be reading it out. I'll be reading, I'll be reading it out to you. Then we start. Is that all right? So now you have three lines. The first line is this. The second line is topic. And the third line is self-study for the next day. All right. So day one is presentation of timetable, comma, introduction to OSCE and hand washing. So for the self-study for the next day class, I want you to watch my video on. I'll be dropping the links here. Make so that you understand it when I'll be talking about it. I'll be dropping the links. I want you to watch all my video on assessments. And on assessments, I have a video on news, I have a video on PHQ9, I have a video on GCS, I have a video on must. So that is all we'll be talking about for tomorrow on, and pain assessment too. So this is it. So self-study on assessment on news, PHQ9, GCS, must, and I'll be talking about assessment too. So that's day one, which will be starting tomorrow it will be starting on 25th yes so watch all this my videos drop your questions on this video like if you finish watching this video and you've watched all my video on assessment plan and um, all my video on assessment on mars phg9 gcs drop your question on this video like the comment section drop all your question you have about assessments about gcs about most about phq9 about fall and fracture so that tomorrow Oh, yeah, tomorrow or next tomorrow, when I'm talking about PHQ9, GCS, more spin assessment, and I'll be answering your questions. I'll be answering your questions. I don't know if we'll get it. So that is for day one. Day two, the topic we'll be dealing with on day two, because today is considered as day one, is PHQ9, GCS, most pain assessment to fall and fracture. So for day two, we are dissecting everything about assessments. So write it the way I've written it here. PHQ9 for day two on that topic. GCS, most fall and fracture and pain assessment too. So for that day two, what I expect you to self-study for the next class, I'll be dropping that video soon, is in-hospital resuscitation, catheter sample of urine, Removal of urinary catheter, MSU slash urinalysis. I'll take it again. For day two, we are dissecting everything about assessments. So we're talking about PHG9, we're talking about GCS, we're talking about MOS, we're talking about fall and fracture, we're talking about pain assessment too for day two. So what I expect you to read about for the next day is in-hospital resuscitation, CSU, ROCU, and MSU. So... Once I'm talking about the day I'll be talking about PHQ9 GCS most pain assessment full and fracture, I'll be leaving a video 
that you will watch for your self-study on in-hospital resuscitation, catheter sample of urine, removal of catheter and urinalysis. So I'll be dropping the links of the video I expect you to watch. So on day three, we'll be talking about in-hospital resuscitation, CSU, removal of catheter, MSU slash urinalysis. So what I expect you to self-study about now is implementation, intramuscular injection, subcutaneous injection, end-of-life care plan, and assessments. So I don't know if we are getting it. So that is all about my time today. So I'm going to be doing it so that you see it. So that is all I expect you to read about. So for day three, we'll be talking about in-hospital resuscitation, catheter sample of urine, removal of catheter, and urinalysis. So, what I expect you to study about for the next day is implementation, intramuscular injection, subcutaneous injection, end-of-life care plan slash what? Assessments. And for day five, sorry, uh, yes, that's it. And for day four, we'll be talking about implementation, intramuscular injection, subcutaneous injection, end-of-life care plan, evaluation, and assessment of end-of-life patients. So what I expect you to read about is NG tube, pressure area assessments, peak flow, using the uh, read about peak flow meter, read about inhaled medication, and read about VIP. So those are the things I expect you to read about. And finally, day five. So for day five, we'll be talking about NG tube, pressure area assessments, peak flow, inhaled medication, vitro infusion phlebitis. And what do I expect you to read about? I expect you to read about planning, evaluation, ANTT, and blood glucose testing. And that is what we are going to talk about on the world on the day six. So guys, this is very simple. If for any reason you don't understand what I'm saying, all you need to do is pause the video, get your bio and your paper, read three lines and for, watch the video again and you are able to get all these into writing. So for today, I'm going to be dropping the link of all the videos I expect you to watch on assessments because even on the assessments, End of life is something a lot of people are thinking. They've stopped end of life. They stopped end of life. And I got a mail three days ago of somebody specially appreciating me, saying thank you so much. I watched your assessment video on end of life, and guess what? That is what I caught. So I'll be dropping all the link of my video on PHQ9, GCS, most um, assessments of patients on end of life. So watch all of them. And if you have any question. Write the question on this comment section. Write them down. Don't be ashamed. We are practicing. Write them down on this comment section. So that when I'll be talking about the PHQ9, the GCS, the MOS, the pain assessment to the fall and fracture, I'll be answering your questions there. So once we are done with there, as I'm dropping the, as I'm uh, answering all your questions in the PHQ9, I'm dropping a video for you to watch on in-hospital resuscitation, catheter sample of urine, removal of catheter and urinalysis. After watching it, on the day three, I'll be talking about in-hospital resuscitation, catheter sample of urine, removal of catheter and urinalysis. Then I expect you, I'll be talking about it, so I'm expecting to answer all your questions you've dropped on the previous video as well. So, when we, so the next day, I'll be dropping the link as well for implementation, intramuscular injection, subcutaneous injection, end of life care plan slash assessment. You've already watched my video on them. So when I'm talking about it, I'm also answering the questions you've asked on it. So guys, that is all. Self study with me strictly for what? For five days. Now, hand washing techniques is very simple. I will also be showing you in this video hand washing techniques because this is what I expect you to learn on today where I'm introducing all skin. This is my hands. Apply gel on your hands. I've applied gel palm to palm. Even if you are using water, palm to palm. This is it. Palm to palm. Right palm over left dosum. Vice versa. Fingers interlaced. Fingers interlocked. Fingers interlocked. Rotation of the form. Rotation of the form. Tips to the fingers. 
tips to the fingers and the wrist so my hands are cleaned so these are the hand washing i expect you to practice it is very simple so practice it and i will see you tomorrow or next yes either tomorrow or next so write all the questions you have so as i as you stop this video i expect you to go watch all my video i'll be keeping the link here watch all my videos on assessment that's why i'm keeping the links here so that you don't watch the one i don't want you to watch because it's a five days to do watch all my videos i'll be dropping the link here on the call on the session just look for it. i'll be dropping all the link on all the videos i want you to watch about assessment so watch them ask your questions here in the comment section so that when i'm talking about them i'm also answering your words your questions so guys that is all i have for you for today thanks so much for supporting me your support is massive i appreciate you and i i can tell you for sure i will celebrate with you because you're going to pass your oski exam so i will see you in my next video hopefully tomorrow or next and until then keep passing your oski exam god bless you all and i love you all bye guys